This PC right here is $750. We're gonna show you how to build it at home and we're gonna show you how to get one for free. But before we dive into today's video, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Are you looking to get the most out of your money for your next gaming PC build? Well, today's video sponsor, Jawa, has you covered. Jawa is an online marketplace for PC gamers by PC gamers and offers a place to buy and sell your hardware without the risk of scalpers and scammers. From buying that brand new GPU for your ultra budget gaming PC build or just buying a fully built pre-built computer, Jawa has a ton of options for PC gamers. And right now you can get some gift guide recommendations from yours truly and other tech YouTubers by checking that link down below. And you can also enter for a chance to win a really awesome $1,800 gaming PC. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to Jawa today and shop their extensive inventory of GPUs, CPUs, and fully built computers. And check those links down below to enter the giveaway and see some of our recommendations. Big shout out again to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the video, shall we? So to start off this parts list, we have the i5-12400F, which is a six core, 12 thread processor with gen four and future gen five support. So this means when we put it into our motherboard, your PCIe lane will run in gen four and also your NVMe will run in gen four for the best speeds. For the motherboard, we have an ASRock B660M HDV. This is a relatively budget board. You know, it only has two RAM slots. It only has two four pins for the CPU, but it does support up to something like a 12th gen i7 or even 13th gen if you're really brave enough. And it definitely has enough upgrade path for R sake. Now for RAM, we decided to go DDR4. So this is a DDR4 motherboard. This is Team Group T-Force Delta, 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz. It is dual channel. It is RGB. So it's going to look nice because this build really doesn't have any lighting in it besides this because this is the most plug and play lighting. We're not going to have to worry about plugging in any cables or anything crazy, keeping this build guide nice and simple. Speaking of Gen 4 performance, we have a Team Group 1 terabyte MP44. This is a Gen 4 SSD that is going to run at some really high speeds so that you, when you're doing reading and writing, it's going to be very quick. Now for the graphics card, we went with the XFX RX 7600. Now this is kind of like the RX 6600 replacement or 6600 XT replacement. Um, has eight gigs of VRAM, great for 1080p gaming, and you can even stretch into 1440p if you want to. And you'll see in the games that we test, it'll perform very well. And it's a very awesome card at a great price point. Now for the power supply, we went this Seasonic S12 power supply, 500 watts, 80 plus bronze. 500 watts is more than enough for this PC build. If you want to upgrade this thing in the future, you can go to like a six, 700 watt power supply, but in all honesty, these are both very power efficient parts, the CPU and GPU, and you'll have plenty of room for upgrades in the future. Now for the case, we went very budget with this because we wanted to make it very easy to build in and also keep the prices low, but this is a solid case from Antec. This is the NX200M. It has tempered glass on the side, has good ventilation up front. That fan should be plenty for this build because the 7600 and 12400F don't produce a ton of heat. They're pretty power efficient uh, parts for a PC build, and I think it's gonna work out very well. Now, as we mentioned, this is a build guide. We're gonna show you step-by-step how to put together this PC if you want to build it at home, and you can use those links down below for updated availability. And then from there, we're going to test it in our favorite titles and let you all see how it performs, and then show you guys how you have a chance to get one of these for free. So stay tuned, guys. So guys, the first step that I like to start off with is doing the motherboard. And I'd say this is one of the more satisfying processes because this is where you get all the clicks and clacks. So I've already taken the motherboard out. I got it on top of my motherboard box, which is typically a good surface to build on. We got our IO shield here, SATA cables, and then some M.2 screws. So first thing we're gonna do is probably the most dangerous step, but it is not too bad if you just follow along. We're gonna go ahead and put our i5 into the CPU stock socket and put the fan on. Now, since this is not like an older AMD CPU, the CPU has no pins in the back. It's, it's honestly pretty safe to touch and you don't really have to worry about breaking these. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this latch, push down, come off to the side and then up, it's kind of spring loaded. And then you're just gonna open that up. These are what you don't wanna touch because if you bend one of those pins even slightly, the build will likely not work. So we're gonna take our notches and we're gonna line up the notches in the right direction. You can also check the arrow. There's an arrow right here, if you see, and an arrow here on the CPU. So we're basically gonna line those up together. And the CPU can only go in one way. And I like to kind of get it above where I'm, I'm going and kind of drop it in. Now, if you notice, I'm off-centered. So rather than pushing down, you're basically gonna kind of take it and just kind of nudge it into place, just like that. So now we know we don't have any bent pins or anything. And then we're gonna take this. You kind of have to push down a little bit with these newer Intel sockets, just like that. And normally this will like fly off. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, it just depends on how it's feeling that day. And now we're going to go ahead and take our stock cooler. It comes with thermal paste, pre-applied. Look at that. Ready to go. Nice and simple. So we're going to go ahead and get this cable kind of unwound because it just comes all jumbled up. And since the logo moves, you don't really have to worry about which way it goes. It's a square pattern. So you can actually mount it any way you want. I like to kind of take the cable and hide it underneath these. So I think I'm going to go 
I'm gonna do like this. So you wanna make sure obviously that your cable is for one, not underneath one of these little pins here because it won't go down. And for two, you really don't want it to be on the CPU cooler because that'll cause issues. So I'll show you how we can confirm that it's in the right spot. So we're gonna go ahead, drop it in, make sure all of these little plastic clips are turned to the right. So they're all turned to the right. And now what I'm gonna do is opposing corners. You're gonna hear some good clicks here, you ready? Boom, now other corners. Boom. And another thing that I like to do is I like to take my, my whole cooler and board and do this. Your cooler should go to hold the board just fine. All of these little plastic clips should be nice and pushed out. That's how you know that they're in all the way. So we're looking good there. And then if you want to make sure your cable's not pinched, you should be able to move it in and out. If it's pinched anywhere, it's obviously not going to move. And so the reason I did that is because now I can plug my cable in. And then when we go to put the board in the case, we can actually kind of tuck it underneath the board, make it real clean. So if you look at that, cable is nice and hidden. We don't just have it coming straight off the cooler looking all ugly like. Cause see, a lot of times you'll have multiple headers, especially if you end up buying a different board than what we recommend. And at the end of the day, you just wanna make sure that your CPU fan goes straight into the CPU fan header. Otherwise you're gonna get some errors and rather than monitoring the CPU temp to adjust the fan, it may monitor like case temp or something else. Now I think next up, I wanna do the ramp. You really can do this stuff out of order too, if you'd like, in case maybe you already started your build and you're just a little worried trying to refresh yourself. It doesn't really totally matter the order you do things. We just really recommend doing the board and the cooler outside of the case rather than doing them in the case because it just makes things a lot harder. And like I said, this is DDR4 RAM. Uh, you'll know you screwed up if no matter what way you put the RAM and it doesn't fit, that means you probably got like a DDR5 board, but this is in fact a DDR4 board. And so with this board, every single board's different, but usually you're gonna either have one slot that opens and one fixed, or you're gonna have two slots to open, but in this case, we only have one. And since we only have two RAM slots, we don't have to worry about orientation. We're just gonna fill both of them. So I like to kind of get this side a little bit further down first, just like that, and then push together. Now, if you have to push one of these pins up with your finger, that means that the RAM probably is not in all the way. So you should be able to use the force of pushing the RAM down like a Jedi, use the force. Are you ready? Boom. And so you notice how both of these are all the way in. We don't, we don't have to worry about any like non-contact for the pins. But lastly, for the board, literally the last step guys, look how easy this was. We're gonna go ahead and take our Gen 4 SSD. We're gonna go ahead and open it. And obviously the board can get a lot more complicated if you have like a full ATX board. Let's say you have four sticks of RAM, that's gonna make it a little more complicated. And if you have a custom cooler, it definitely complicates things. Um, once you've been doing this for a while, it's really easy to figure out the coolers, but if it's like your first or second time building, coolers can kind of be a nightmare. So we're gonna use the topmost slot for M.2 since it's a Gen 4 and uh, typically the one closest to the CPU is always gonna be Gen 4 as long as the CPU and motherboard support it. So we're gonna put this in kind of at an angle. So if you notice how it's sitting, it goes in at that angle. You don't put it straight in, you put it at a little incline and then you're gonna basically push down. We're gonna grab an M.2 screw and these are tiny little screws, look how small those are. So they're not gonna be like your typical SSD or hard drive or power supply screws. These are kind of their own thing. They are typically gonna use a PH1 bit too. So like a PH2 that most people have in their household is not gonna work. It'll just spin. Magnetic is preferred. So that helps a lot. Oh my gosh, I missed, here we go. And now these, you really don't wanna tighten down super hard. You just kinda, just just hand tighten, you know, like just put the, I usually just use the tip of my finger. You can pretty much use a precision toolkit to put this in. So now here is our completed motherboard. We got our i5 underneath the stock cooler. We got both sticks of RAM filling both slots and we have our Gen 4 SSD in the topmost slot. And look, you even have an extra like M.2 Wi-Fi slot if you wanted to add Wi-Fi to this board. But this board is A-OK, -okay, ready to go. All right guys, now we're gonna show you how to install the power supply. We have our case out, the NX300M. We're gonna go ahead and take off this back panel. Oh, these are not good thumb screws. Sometimes the thumb screws won't be thumb screwing where you actually have to get a screwdriver and uh, unscrew them a little bit, just loosen them a little bit, or you can just go all the way, whatever you want to do, but you know, I'm going all the way. I tried to be cool and just uh, show you my finger strength, but it's not happening today. Yeah, so I'm crank these pretty bad. So we'll go ahead and unscrew all these screws. What I like to do sometimes is stick them right back in here as well so you don't lose them. Always a good little tip. This is probably one of the best tips we've lived by. Yes, best tip. Right here is where your power supply is gonna go. And we're gonna go ahead and get our power supply, the Seasonic power supply, and open her right up. Let's open up this way. And look at that, 500 watts, this is a non-modular power supply, meaning all your cables that you will need are already installed and some cables you don't need are gonna be installed. You can't really do much about it, they're gonna be there. Since it's a 500 watt power supply, there's not a ton of extra cables. There'd be just enough to where if you upgrade in the future, you have what you need, but then sometimes you get stuff like Molex that you don't actually need for this build. So it is what it is. You can spend a little bit more on a semi-modular if you want to, but for this build, this will be just enough. All right, inside the bag with the power supply, you do get this little bag that has four coarse threaded screws. I'll show you guys what those look like. Those are what we call power supply screws or coarse threaded screws. They are gonna be used to screw in the power supply into the case. 
Now we're going to take our power supply and fan side down. We're going to slide it in to the power supply basement. And as you can see from Jonah's perspective, the power supply will line up with the back and you will see four screw holes popping up. So we're gonna take our screwdriver and we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our coarse red screws and we're gonna screw it in. Very simple, yet effective. I'll show you how to screw one in and then we'll get it all going. So we'll line one up and boom. So we're gonna do that one, that one, that one, and that one. All right, power supply is installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off this tempered glass side panel, which cool feature of this case is it's magnetic. So we can just slide it out here and then lift up so it comes off the hinge. And then be sure to put that in somewhere safe where you don't kick it or you know drop it or whatever. It's happened before, we definitely have damaged those. So you gotta be very careful. One other extra thing I guess I'll show you guys real quick is this fan, the one fan we have included, uh, has a cable going down in a very weird, well, layout. So what we want to do is flip this fan so where the cable comes out from this top part. So it can easily run to this cable management option um, in the top right corner, normally for the CPU power. Again, this is all just looks. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it does make running a cable easier and gives you more length if you need to do some better cable management. It's kind of stuck in there. Pull it out and rotate it. And then just put it right back in. Yeah, a lot of case companies do this for some reason. Um, never really understood it. I think it's just how it is in the, out of the factory. But as you can see, the cable is in a much better location where I can just go bleh, 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 and shove it right up through there. Much better, so it's not coming from all the way at the bottom and you have to like cable manage it or whatever. But now that we have this panel off and we have the fan flipped and the power supply installed, we're gonna show you guys how to install the motherboard. But to do so, we're gonna need some screws. And in this bag right here are all the screws you're gonna need for this PC build. You also get an extra PCI cover in case you pop up one of these and you need to replace it. These are always good to have. Um, and then we have all the screws in here with extra standoffs. They're all in one bag, so we'll go through them real quick. But for installing the motherboard, you're going to need these fine threaded screws. I'll go ahead and put a couple examples right there. Those are the fine threaded screws. And then next to it, I'll put the coarse thread, the ones we just used for the power supply. Just so you know the difference between the two, you wanna use the fine thread when installing this motherboard. Now we're also gonna need to plop in an IO shield. This right here is the IO shield. It can be very hard to do sometimes. Um, it can pop out and stuff, but really, you wanna go to your motherboard and be like, okay, the IO shield goes like this. You see how it covers the IO, it's an IO shield. So you're gonna take this, and you're going to install it in this open spot right here on your case. And normally a good rule of thumb is your audio ports are always gonna be on the bottom. So if you just wanna base it on that, this is what the audio jack ports look like. So you can go that route. But we're gonna go ahead and line it up through the inside of the case. Make sure no cables get stuck because that can happen, especially this fan cable that we just moved. Okay. And then we're gonna push all four corners in until it pushes in to the spot. And of course, some days, this is really easy. And other days, I can't do it right. Okay, so we're gonna push until you hear some clicks. And there we go. Our IO shield is installed and good to go. Now we're gonna lay the case down and install the motherboard. The one thing you should always check, and sometimes we don't even check it, but we do recommend it, is make sure that there's no additional standoffs. These little gold things right here are where your screw is gonna screw the motherboard down into the case. If there's an extra one that doesn't line up with any of these screw holes, there's a chance it'll hit the back of the board and short the board out and your system will not turn on. So if you ever have an issue with the system not turning on, definitely check that. But on initial glance, I don't think we have any spare ones because they're all marked for the micro ATX or ITX option, MI. Cool. So now we can see that. So we're gonna take our uh, motherboard with everything installed, grab it by the CPU cooler. That's normally the safest way to do it if you installed it properly. And we're gonna go ahead and lay down our motherboard. And we're gonna line it up with the back of the IO. So we'll go ahead and make sure everything lines up properly. As you can tell, everything is pushing out, nothing's blocked, everything looks good. And then from there, we're gonna look inside and see, okay, so we have some screw holes lining up. We have these two on the right side. We have this one on the bottom. And then we have two up top by the RAM and the CPU power. Now what we're gonna do is take our fine threaded screws and start screwing those in. Very simple, take the same screwdriver you've been using before, go ahead, line things up and twist until you get a bit of resistance and boom, you're good to go. And we're gonna repeat that for all the screw holes that are open on the motherboard. Just finish screwing this in. And the last screw is going in. 
and would you look at that? We have our motherboard installed, we have our power supply installed, it's all installed properly. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is get some cameras set up for you guys so you can see the actual plugging in of everything. We're gonna get the uh, 24 pin, all the CPU power, we're gonna get everything else plugged into the motherboard, get the graphics card installed, then from there we'll be good to go. But let's not waste any more time and show you how to plug everything up. All right, guys, so now the fun part of running all the cables, I'm gonna start off with probably like the hardest thing to do, which is the front panel. And that is going to be in this case, a reset switch, power switch, power LED, and hard drive LED. All right, Matt, you ready? Feed it through. We're gonna go right through there. Does this look like a good spot? Yep, looks like a good spot. And the front panel will be plugged in right here. You can see the uh, layout of it below the header, so you can plug in the right ones, but I will verbally say where I'm gonna plug stuff up. We're gonna plug up the hard drive LED in the bottom left two pins. And then we're gonna take the power LED and plug it above those. And then we're gonna take the reset switch and do the middle two pins right next to the hard drive LED. And then we're gonna do the power switch right above the reset switch. And then from there, you can just tuck in the cables. Or if you have a handy handy partner like Jackson, he can pull them through for you and boom. And as you can see, we have everything plugged up. Jackson pulled the cables back through so it's nice and clean. And the front panel should be working where you can hit the power button and everything will work just fine. All right, so next up, these connectors are usually together, which is USB 2 and HD audio. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead, and HD audio is usually always on like the very left side of the board. I can find the, is that it? Yep, there it goes, popping out. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and feed you just, cause it's gonna go to the same spot, USB 2. Yep, so I got these two headers, HD audio again, the far left side of the board, you can see that little header right there. We're gonna go ahead and line it up where the missing pin is. Now USB 2, which for the USB 2 headers on the motherboard, we're gonna install it into a USB 2 header, which you need to be careful because there is a COM port right there um, <laughs> that I've accidentally plugged it into before and it's like short of the system, so don't do that. Um, a USB 2 header, we're gonna plug into the USB 2 header right here. It's always good to look at labels. Yeah, so always look at labels so you know what's happening. And as you can tell, we have the HD audio plugged in on the far left side, and then we have the USB 2 plugged in right there. All right, so next up we're gonna be doing USB 3. This is a really big header, so it's kind of hard to get this one mixed up, but we're gonna feed that right through here. Sometimes it is in the bottom, but a lot of times it's next to the 24 pin. So you're gonna make sure you line up the little pin out right here, or the clip, whatever you wanna call it, right with the USB 3 header that's below our 24 pin, which we will be getting to. Now you're gonna go ahead and line it up, and it should click, and boom. Just like that, you're good to go. You can tuck that back a little bit. Be careful, you don't want to pull it too hard because you can rip it out of the header, which he might do, you never know. But it's plugged in, I got USB 3. All right, and now I know normally we go straight to the power supply, but I think we're gonna give you a fan header because we only have one fan right now yep. in this build. It's just a little three pin, so we can go in any three or four pin header. What's the most available one? And I'm gonna be putting this kind of where the front panel is. Yep, and as you can see, there's a fan header right here. That is a fan header that actually duels as a, actually just a channel fan. So it is the channel fan to header, so you can mess with that in the BIOS if you want to, to adjust fan speed, but we'll be good just plugging this up like so. Make sure to line up the notch, and it only goes in one way. The beauty of PC building, most things only go in one way, and as you can tell, it's good to go. I think it's 24 pin time. Oh. Main power. So next up is gonna be the primary power for the board. This is the 24 pin or a 20 plus four pin, but pretty much every modern build is just gonna be like a 24 pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get these connected together. It's gonna go right up through here. Uh, this is one of those connectors that you definitely can't mess up. It slots in one way, it clips on one side. We're gonna take it, pinch these two together is the best way to do it. Line it up with the 24 pin. And you really gotta push this one. All right, so we got it lined up and <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and push until you hear a great crunch. <laughs> until you hear your board break in <laughs> until half. Until you hear your board break in half. But the 24 pin is installed and we need to move on to the CPU power. So next up is the CPU power. So this board has a single eight pin or you could also call it like a, a four plus four because it's two separate headers. But we're gonna take this four plus four and we're gonna feed it right through the top here. So yeah, this one's a little difficult because they are separated. They don't really slot together. But as long as you pinch them together and plug them up, you'll be good to go. So here's the CPU header right up here that I'm ready to plug into. So we're gonna keep these pinched together, make sure they line up where they need to go. And then we're gonna push until it clicks. And as you can see, our CPU power a pin is plugged in and ready to go. You guys wanna know the best part about all these cables? We don't even need them. We only need this one extra cable, which is gonna be to power our graphics card. And I think that that one, is that just an eight pin? I believe it's an eight pin. We'll go ahead and open it up and see. Yeah, let's, let's open it and find out. But this right here is going to be an eight pin. 
uh, connector. It's technically called a six plus two. Sometimes they'll just be connected, sometimes they won't. But I believe that this RX 7600, which is a really power efficient card, will just need this one. And I like to use, rather than like the daisy chain one that comes up, I like to use the main connector and then zip tie them together. And a lot of times, as you can see, it'll say VGA rather than CPU. And once again, just to remind you guys, the CPU is a four plus four, VGA is a six plus two. I, we have made the mistake of plugging this into the CPU uh, header. It will often plug in. I don't know why, but it will not work. The A pin power is all we need. Ooh. Now we have the graphics card out and everything. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is remove all this peel. You wanna get rid of that before you install it. Um, sometimes it can be a pain, but just unpeel it like you do in these sort of piece of electronics that you end up getting. A banana. Yes, unpeel it like <laughs> a banana. Now we got the peel removed, and as you can see, we got this two fan card from XFX. It looks pretty solid. And what we're gonna go ahead and do the most important peel is yes, <laughs> the most important peel. What we're gonna go ahead and do is remove this cover right here, the PCI cover, which actually allows you to plug this thing into the motherboard. All right, so before Matt puts in that card, I think I'm gonna go ahead and run our little VGA cable uh, or PCIe power, and I'm gonna do that through here because I think that's gonna look the cleanest, but honestly, this part's kind of up to the user whatever you think looks the best. I always just recommend like the shortest run. All right, so here's the VGA power and we did run it through this cutout mainly because you see the length of this GPU. It's the closest to that plug. So you can actually get it plugged up pretty easily and you could run it different ways, but honestly, I think it's the cleanest in this case. All right, guys, to install the GPU, we need to remove this PCI slot cover first. Take your screwdriver, unscrew this coarse threaded screw and don't lose it push it off to the side. So this little cover, be sure you keep it along with the coarse red screw. Now we're gonna take our graphics card, as you can see right here, and we're gonna see where it lines up on the motherboard and the case PCI slots. And as you can tell, it is gonna be these top two right here, which in this budget case, it is a break off cover, which means you will have to break it off and you can't put it back on. So do not put on the wrong one. So you do have these two replacement options as well if you do end up uh, breaking off the wrong one, but always check before you do it. Now we're gonna go ahead to break these off is push in first. And then we're just going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Next. And boom, now it is ready to go. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is slot in our GPU. We're gonna go ahead and line it up with the top slot. Make sure that this is pushed back. This is a locking mechanism that keeps the GPU in place. We're gonna make sure it all lines up properly. And as you can see, it's slotted in, and now we're gonna push until oh, we hear a click. Crunchy. It is a little crunchy. And now we're gonna take our power supply screws, the same ones we use for the power supply, and screw in these two screw points to hold down the graphics card. Should be very simple. It always helps to hold up the GPU a little bit too, so you can actually get full access to those screw holes. This one takes a little bit more force. Sometimes the actual screw holes are not great, um, so you kind of have to force it in there, but as long as you're using the right screws, it will work. And there you go, it's screwed in. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take that PCI power connector that Jackson fed to us just recently. Here it is, it looks beautiful. So as you can see right now, we currently have a six plus two. We need the full eight pin. So we're gonna take this extra one and then pinch this connector together so we can go like so and plug in our GPU power. And boom, it clipped in and now it's installed. It's good to go. Now we do have this extra cable, which will be something you just wanna cable manage a little bit. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna go ahead and push it back through. So it's out of the way. And as you can tell, we have the power good and installed. Now, the thing I told you definitely not to throw away, this right here. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and put that back on. So we're gonna put this cover back on and just do this in reverse order. And just like that, your PC build is technically ready to turn on. Like it's good to go. But Jax is gonna do some cable management in the back to show you guys how you can keep your builds looking nice and clean. And then from there, we're gonna test it in some games because this thing is ready to go and I'm excited to see how this combination works. So now we're gonna take all these extra cables that we do not need, which are a mixture of basically Molex and SATA. And we're gonna put these under here just in case we ever need to use them for anything else. You know, no need to cut them off or anything. <laughs> so now I'm gonna start doing some cable management runs. So what I usually like to do is basically take like handfuls of cables at a time, as long as uh, we're not pulling them out of anything. And you wanna make sure that you don't run the cables like uh, across like open spots like this, because it'll be kind of obvious when you put the back panel on. And then as you tighten it, pull your cables tight, just like that. And that's how you get a nice clean run. All right, so make sure that your power switch on the back is turned to one for binary on. And then, as long as we got our front panel plugged in right and everything works, it should just turn on. Now, some little fun facts about 
how to make sure your build works before it's hooked up to a monitor. Uh, it's okay to see the build boot loop like usually two to three times. So it'll be on like this and then it might turn off and then come back on. Let it do that a couple times. And in theory, I think that we're probably already in the BIOS. We don't have Windows right now, so it's just the BIOS. Uh, I should be able to tap the power button one time on a new drive that doesn't have Windows and it should just turn off. And we're good. Now, if you have to hold it down, you might have an issue and you wanna get hooked up to a monitor ASAP, but I think that we're good to go here. Let's get hooked up to a monitor and get some games going. It's gaming time. <laughs> all right, guys, we are playing Apex Legends. We're at 1080p and I pretty much bumped up all the settings to high because I, I think we can pretty much max this game out with these kind of specs and look at that. High refresh rate. Whoop, whoop. 180 to 200 FPS, no problems with this combination. You could almost run a 240 hertz monitor if uh, Apex and other like, you know, kind of lower end triple A's or esports is your thing. Yep. Now for this build to keep it easy, obviously the stock cooler is perfectly fine, but you could opt for something like an ID cooling cooler if you wanted to pay a little extra money there. But obviously for this price point, stock cooler is what we went with. Um, the case is fine as well. There are other options if you want to get some with RGB, but again, we're trying to keep this build as simple as possible, very straightforward and it's working perfectly fine. Temperatures are adequate enough. Yeah. And we actually do have the side panel on if you're wondering and we're, uh, we're doing pretty good temperature wise. So. I'm not super upset about it, but yeah, you could definitely lower some noise. That, that stock fan's whining a little bit, yes. uh, but it just goes to show that you don't really have to have like insane cooling. And we only have one fan in this too. Just one fan. It's holding up. Ow, ow. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. One thing to note as well, and it, it might actually play a factor in the temperatures. Our ambient temperature in the room right now is a bit higher than it normally is. Um, we're 75 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Normally in here it's like 68, 69, so. It's very warm in It here. is warm in here, so that uh, GPU temp at 81 might probably be more like 78, 79 on average for most people. You can't kill me, man, you can't kill me. Oh, that was Oh, goodness. Ooh, we're getting, we're getting infiltrated, guys. Oh God, oh God. All my teammates are dying. <laughs> Bounce pad. Oh god, there's so many. This base is no longer our base. What is happening? Oh my god, I think it's time for me to die. Oh, oh. No, no <laughs> they have infiltrated. Ouchie. <laughs> All right. We're not gonna, we're not gonna fight like this, guys. We're gonna fight like men. Buddy, like men. Please. Nowhere, apparently. There's like no B? No B, no B? Well, we can't always be ready. You can't hit me, no, 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 boo boo. What? Oh, what a, oh what a bullet sponge. Watch this. Ooh. Yep. Oh my god, he has a oh, shot on Oh, what well, a laser! I guess we're gonna call it there. Look at that, 2,000 damage, no problem. This PC performs amazing so far. Let's OG Fortnite time, baby. OG Let's Fortnite. go. Watch it not run it. All right, guys, we are now in Fortnite, diving into old Dusty Divot. <laughs> um, classic Fortnite. We'll look at the settings here in a second. We're like a mixture of like high, medium, low settings. Um, basically what it defaulted to. And we're gonna run with it because so far it's looking pretty good and we are really maxing out that CPU. But I've noticed this Fortnite update, this is the second PC we've tested on it. Been running really good. Whenever you see those little stutters too, it's probably just the game loading in texture still, which might happen the first game or two that you play. Oh, is, the, is the big, the medium one called a chug jug too? No, it's just called a shield pot, I think. Oh God. Ah, oh, are you uh, kidding me? Oh, I'm getting- Someone just took your kill. Ah! Is that a gingerbread man? That's better, slow it down. <clears throat> oh, you, dance. Oh no, dance. Yeah. yeah, you look dumb dancing. Hey! Whoa! Whoa! <clears throat> that guy went from bot to real player real quick. He was like, nah. I think someone took over the bot. Oh! oh. Those are some real player antics right there. Oh! Ooh. Casey. Wow. Shout Casey. Out. Shout out Casey. Shout out Casey. But hey, 
Fortnite OG, it runs great. Honestly, <laughs> since the update, not too bad. Look, he's chugging. Is that Rick Grimes? Is it? I think it is. There's so <laughs> many collabs in Fortnite now, it's insane. <laughs> but yeah, chug jugging, and it's performing well. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is run some AAA titles. We're going to run um, some Spider-Man. We're going to run some Cyberpunk. And we're going to run Starfield because you guys asked for more demanding games. We're going to run three of them at the end of this. So you guys can see the limits of this PC. And then from there, we'll wrap this video up real quick and teach you how you can win one of these for free. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking our gaming PC for $750. We were getting close to our 240 FPS at medium, even high settings in most games, which is absolutely mind blowing. On November 10th, we will be giving away one of these PCs during our six hour live stream. And we'll be giving away a bunch of other stuff as well. So be sure to follow our Twitch stream by checking the link down below. But if you also wanna buy one of these, we'll have four of them over at PCBros.tech for a little bit more so we can make our money and recoup shipping costs and such. But you can buy these things if you don't feel like building it yourself. But if you guys are following the build guide that we did let us know what you think of it and use those links in the description down below they are affiliate links they will help us out and it'll give you up-to-date pricing on everything you need to build this awesome pc that thing for the money is a really good buy and for all the people who are mad that this video is still up and the giveaway is over don't worry every single month we do one of these giveaways so just stay tuned to the channel to find out when the next one is we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros where we give away a gaming PC every single month. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So don't forget guys, four more of these PCs will be available and if they're gone too, we have plenty of other staple builds to choose from. PCBros.tech, we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. If you use code TOSTYBROS2 on China, it'll save 2% on your next purchase. And stay tuned for awesome Black Friday sales coming to the website soon. See you guys later, goodbye.